Good morning, Union Church friends. I am Roy Copeland. My wife Ann and I have been members of Union Church since 1974. We are also members of the Joy Sunday School class. Thank you for providing me the opportunity of delivering the church-wide Sunday School lesson this morning. Join me in prayer, please. Lord, allow my words to speak to others this beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. I have chosen scripture today from the book of Hebrews. Remember, Hebrews was written by Paul the Apostle about A.D. 61. And my key verse comes from chapter 11, verse 1. If you have your Bibles, join with me this morning. I'll read it to you. Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for the proof of what is not seen. I really like the entire chapter 11. This chapter compares our faith of the Old Testament's fathers with the faith exercised by today's Christian believers. Remember, faith and hope are the key words of this passage. Faith and hope are two cornerstones in our Christian life. Faith is recorded 38 times in the book of Hebrews and 26 times in chapter 11 of Hebrews. When we look across the board of the New Testament, faith and hope are written a verse or two at least 15 times. The fact that these two words appear so often together speaks to how interrelated they are. Trusting God is not always easy, and because of that, living our faith is not always easy. I remember an illustration a classmate gave me about a year ago dealing with faith. It seems that him and his cousins were visiting their father's farm, and they were having a great time in the old barn and his brother dared him to jump from the barn rafters to the hay below. Well, my friend had faith in his brother as well as faith in the hay below. This was what we classified as acts of faith. Other practical examples of faith, when I set to take this message, I sat in the chair on my porch and I had faith knowing that chair would hold me. Uh, today, I think I even approached a, a traffic light in Irmo, and I had a green signal. And I had great faith in that traffic signaling device, knowing that the green light gave me the okay to proceed, and had the faith, the tro hope, and trust in the perpendicular had the red light. One of my favorite verses of scripture, I call it foundational scriptures, is out of the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 11. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. A lot of times when I read the Bible, I read the Bible aloud. That way I'm speaking the word and I'm also hearing it. That's why I say faith comes from hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. Try it sometimes. Martin Luther King said, faith is taking the first step even when you do not see the whole staircase. Hope, however, appears when we least expect it and probably when we most need it. A text or card from a friend offering encouragement or wishing wellness. Visiting a homebound person or one in the hospital. Being with that special grandchild. Seeing a remarkable sunrise or sunset. Now let me ask you all a question. Would you like this new $20 bill? Well, I'll give it to you. But first, let me do a couple things. I'm going to crumble it up. I'm going to pat it in 
my hands, I'm going to stomp it on the ground. So no matter what I did, each of you still wants the $20 bill. You want it because it did not decrease in value. It's still worth $20. You live your faith the same way. Even though you and I are sinners every day, Jesus Christ died for our sins in order for each of us to be saved through his grace. We are ambassadors for Jesus with our faith, with our hope, and with our love. Many times in our lives, life crumbles as it grinds us into the dirt. We make bad decisions. We feel worthless. We deal with poor circumstance. Woe is me. Second Timothy chapter four tells us to continue to fulfill our ministry. I like a key verse there, verse seven, and it states, you have fought the good fight. You have finished the race. Now keep the faith. Keep that faith. I remember years ago, as a boy, eight, nine, ten, my grandmother made great desserts, pies and cakes. But one of my favorite at that time was uh, a banana pudding or a lemon pie. And she would prepare it, oh, it looked great. With the chiffon on it, baked it in the oven, a little golden brown, came out smelling great. But when I would sit down to eat the first bite, I did not get the feeling and the sense of taste of that lemon or those bananas or pudding that chiffon was there. It was kind of hollow. You cannot have hope without faith. Hope without faith is hollow. It's just like that banana pudding and that lemon pie I just told you about. Hey, imagine this. Nor would look foolish building a boat in the desert without faith and hope. Sarah would never be a mother in her advanced age without faith and hope. God is good and faithful even when we are faithless and hopeless. He never takes his hand off us. I am reminded of what retired Bishop James King said at last year's South Carolina Annual Conference in Greenville to all of us attendees. He said, your power switch is called faith. Now turn it on and leave it on. Continue to live that faith. Each of us has faith and hope in Christ as we walk the daily walk. The Apostle Paul said in his letter to the Thessalonians, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for each of us. I'm reminded of the old hymnal. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord again. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in Jesus Christ each and every day. Now, what was my take home of this lesson this morning? To me, my take home to you was hope makes sense only through the powerful lens of faith. Hope makes sense only through the powerful lens of faith. Let us pray. Dear Lord, the simple things make all the difference each and every day. May we daily experience faith, hope, and love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Stay safe, healthy, and be sure to check on others. Have a blessed week and look to see you all real soon. A great week.